welcome back to my channel. I'm Coach Carrie with Foster Fast Fitch, and today we are talking about part one of our foundational series. You're going to take a look into the clinic that I've done in Iowa, and we're going to go over the first two parts of building your foundation, which is snap and arm revel and T drill. You're going to learn some secrets, some tricks, some drills. All that's gonna help you build that foundation to build a successful pitching foundation where you can build all your pitches on. Thanks for joining and I hope you like it. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Power line is just a line, it's an imaginary line that's gonna go from the center of the plate all the way back to the center of the mound, okay? When you're standing on the power line, how many of you guys have been taught to put your toes on the power line like this? Raise your hand. How many have been taught this? Okay, how many is this? Raise your hand, big, big, big. It's okay, it's okay, raise it. The fact that y'all don't know is problem number one. <laughs> All right, so when you pitch, you wanna be at a 45 degree angle. You want your knee stacked under your hip, under your shoulder, okay? This is called stacked. You will hear me talk about it for the next two days. It is a powerful position. It is also gonna be the pitch position that you get in when you pitch and you jump out. You wanna be here. A lot of y'all are throwing from here, okay? When you're throwing from here, you can't seek what's in and get the hip to drive the hand through, okay? So we're gonna be toes on the power line, turn them to a 45 degree angle, drop the back knee, knee under hip, under shoulder. When you're throwing your snaps, how many have been taught to throw your snaps from here? Raise your hand. Big, big, big. If you did not get taught that, tell me what you got taught. Remember so? Where, if you're not here, where are you at? Show me. So all of you are here. Has anybody ever been throwing from here? Yeah. Okay. So good. When you're pitching, you want to be palm up. If you're palm down, then you're going to be elbow locked. Shoulders are going to be rotated forward. Now you're going to be too tight to throw. All right. So you want to go from here. This is going to be new for you guys because you're not going to understand how to snap. Okay. You're still going to snap, but you're going to lead with the pinky and then snap. Okay. Eventually you'll have an external to internal rotation, but that nat happens naturally. All right, I don't want you to come up here and try to start doing this number of trying to throw a pitch. You've still got a release. So you're gonna let your hand drop, back of the hand close to your thigh, and then you're gonna let the ball roll off your fingertips, and then you can come on through. That's one. Number two, we're all doing upper body for the first 30 minutes with all lower body. I want you to learn to let your arm unravel and fall to that snap at the bottom of your circle, okay? So the next one is you're here. So the snap, we're down here. You see how my ball's under my hip? Nine o'clock, or T drill. My arm is above, my ball's above my shoulders. My elbow looks like a banana. Say banana. banana. So if I tell you to get your banana, you know what I'm talking about. If you forget your hand position, just ask for money. All right? <laughs> ask somebody for some money. That's where you are. You're not here, you're here. All right? Another thing, where are my shoulders pointing? Yeah. Straight. Do they do this number? This is what I call a helicopter. You start doing this number, then the ball's gonna go where? Straight or crooked? Crooked. Crooked. So, if I keep telling you about your shoulder, talk about that front shoulder, act like it's a bow and arrow, pulling that bow back, release it, it's going to your target. You start rotating like this, then the ball's not gonna go straight, okay? What you're trying to do is rotate on your shoulders versus rotate on your hips. Your hips have gotta go before the hand. Shoulder, they may not understand this, but you're trying to create that separation like a rubber band pulling back, so then it slingshot forward, all right? If they want to move their shoulders and hips at the same time, you don't get the separation, therefore you get a lot of rotator and puff issues. They're gonna start pulling with their shoulder and they're not creating power through using their body and their sequencing. So what you're looking for is a parent coach, heel down, knee in, hip through, shoulders, bow and arrow. And then allowing the hand just to come nice and straight through the zone. If they start doing this and you're looking at chest when they're throwing, then they're doing in their shoulders and back what their hips should be doing. So putting a lot of pressure on their L4, L5, rotator cuff labor, all right? And again, they're not gonna throw hard, they're just gonna try to manipulate speed through their joint, and that's where you get injuries. Also, they'll throw really slow, all right? So when they're here, you wanna make sure I'm throwing it here and then there. When you find your pocket, You'll hear me talk about pocket. Listen, the back of the hand brushes by the pocket. That tells you when to throw it. Guys, the parents, I think you can probably hear it, but 
I will throw every pitch, if I throw a curve, off that pitch. It tells me where to release. If my foot is not underneath me, and my foot's over here, guess what I'm not finding? Pocket. The pocket. So if you hear me say don't drag out, drag your shoelaces, get stacked, shoulders in. This is all why. It's all got a sequence together. Let's go, get those hands down. See how you're collapsing the front knee? Straighten the front knee. Straight, elbow bent like a banana. Let the hand drop, snap here and hold. Get your heel up off the ground. Bend more. Yeah, straight different leg. You want to be leaning back. Okay, When you're here, the way that you snap is you allow what I call a wiggle wiggle. You allow the fingers to drop back of the hand to get here. Then, as the knee is rotating, coming through, you snap. Okay, you snap off your fingertips. You don't want to get in this position and you don't want to leap. Okay, and this is going to be wild. Put your hand here. Lift like this, okay? I want you to turn your shoulder, not like this, turn your shoulder. Roll your shoulder forward, like that. Now, I want you to push down. Hard. Tell me where you feel that. Yeah? Do you feel it here? Yeah. So she feels it in the front of her shoulder. Okay? Now, I want you to be here, and I want you to push down with your elbow. Now, where do you feel it? Right there? Okay. Now she feels it in what we call armpit or her lap. So do we want to throw with the front of her shoulder, okay, or do we want to throw with her back muscle? We want to pull with the back muscle down. So part of the sequencing is, is called, like what I call it's creating a tornado. When the heel goes down, and the knee starts to internally rotate, it's gonna rotate the hip too, it's a ball and socket joint. When it does that, it's gonna start pulling on the serratus anterior, then the lat muscle, then it's gonna externally rotate the hand, pulling through the trap and releasing through the elbow. So you start creating power like a tornado, coming through the knee and then extending through the hand, going through the core, like that. If at any part that kinetic sequence or that chain breaks and we bend or we drag, you leap force. So all the force that she generated to, to unravel and go through the arm, she's leaking out or over, or what she's trying to do is concoction that energy into a body part, and when all that is supplied through just the shoulder, that's where you get the injuries, okay? So what I'm trying to get her to do is create energy through the ground, legs, back, arms stays nice and loose. That's it, wrapping it up. Thanks again for watching it. I hope this. Um, Three-part series helps you guys out on building that foundation. Again, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Thanks again.